Hello Himo fans and welcome to this new video. So today I want to answer Shogo and Sensei Seki. They made a beautiful video in which Sensei Seki was trying out the longsword, experimenting with it, especially with uh, his technique of his own style, trying out what was working and what was not. And generally speaking, they were asking themselves some question about the shape of the longsword, etc. So today I want to answer them and uh, well, let's start. So I wrote everything on this hyper technological support so the crosscut and why it is positioned in this direction compared to this direction. Now this is something I already heard many times when uh, uh, people outside of the HEMA environment, generally speaking, analyze the longsword and they ask them themselves why the crosscut is not in this direction. Well, uh, of course it may be useful also in this direction, for sure. I am not uh, used to this uh, uh, even idea or trying out something similar, but generally speaking I find it far more useful in this direction. Now, this, of course, is because when you are pairing, for example, if you parry an action and maybe the opponent blade slides down toward your hand, of course, it saves your hand. Generally speaking, we parry a lot with our edge in, uh, in longsword. So this makes it easier to not fail a parry, let's say, for whatever reason. Now, another really important thing is the uh, opposition. Actually, this is the most important thing, in my opinion. So the cascade can be used to land opposition. So what I mean by opposition? By opposition I mean basically opposing to the opponent blade while landing an action. Of course this can happen against, for example, someone which is sitting in longa, as we call it, which is very similar to, to Chudan no Kamae. We collect the opponent blade and we land our thrust. Now thrusting with the longsword uh, compared to the katana, as far as I have seen, is a little bit more prominent simply because of the crosscut. So it is easier to keep the opponent weapon at an angle, collect it, and uh, let's say being safe uh, while landing the thrust. This is useful also while landing counter attacks. Uh, so if the opponent is thrusting at me, I can do a scambiare di punta and I can land my thrust in the meantime. Or if, it, if the opponent is cutting at me, I can try and land a thrust into the opponent cut. Of course, this action can be landed in various directions. So I can oppose low left, high left, or of course, high right, and even if it happens lesser, low right. While talking about our cutting guard instead, of course, it happens that we find uh, also a lot of guards over the head, which like I call it uh, Vontag or Guardia di Falcone, for example, or Guardia Alta. Uh, at the same time, we find a lot more, actually, guards over the shoulder. So if we want to cut from the right or the left, we see a lot of this kind of position, which seems to be more prominent in, uh, uh, generally speaking, the European longsword compared to the guard over the head. Now, the guard over the head gives you far more chance about the angle of cutting, uh, the guard over the shoulder, of course, can deliver also opposite cuts, uh, the cuts from opposite direction, but it is a little bit technically uh, more complex to do it. Uh, at the same time, it is more uh, comfortable uh, for the motivation that basically uh, Sensei Seki mentioned it. Uh, when we are raising our weapon over the head, uh, there is the chance of uh, uh, being stuck with our, on our head simply. So it is not as easy as uh, with the katana, which doesn't have the cross guard and uh, makes the position easier to reach and also more comfortable because the weapon can uh, get closer to our head. And so the uh, space and the time also needed to both reach the guard and deliver in the cut is uh, slightly shorter. Now, in relation to weapon handling, uh, Sensei Seki was asking uh, himself uh, and the presence if he was doing something right or wrong in relation to handling the weapon uh, because, of, again, of the crosscut position or stuff like that. Uh, actually, he wasn't doing nothing wrong at all. The idea is that you can rotate your weapon in your hand depending from the action that you want to deliver. So, for example, if I want to thrust and uh, having my crosscut which is opposing to the uh, to the opponent blade, I can rotate the blade in this way, so having the thumb over the blade, or if I prefer to 
deliver my cutting action, this kind of regular, let's call it handling position, is far more useful. So yes, it is, uh, this is correct, this is correct, and it is even better to uh, transition from one position to another. So one interesting thing I noticed is uh, related to the, our pommel, and I have seen Sensei Seking do something like that, uh, like thrusting by letting the handle slide. Um, it's super interesting, of course, we have similar actions. We actually don't make, don't really make the, the weapon slide, uh, especially in the medieval trad longsword tradition. Uh, we see this kind of thrust, so the thrust by the pommel, but is generally speaking landed uh, with the hand which already uh, keeps the pommel. So for example the left hand uh, by stepping for example also which has a lot of reach compared to the uh, standard thrust and of course can uh, fool the opponent let's say but there is not as far as I know uh, the idea of uh, using the weapon with one, one hand and uh, letting the weapon slide and uh, keeping it from the pommel with the main hand for example. I've seen uh, other things such as pushing the weapon with the pommel and keeping it with the main hand in this way but not uh, this thing here specifically. At the same time it is pretty similar, we have similar technique landing the thrust by the pommel with the hand already uh, on the pommel. Now this brings me to another side topic which is drawing techniques. Now the actual action of letting the sword slide with one single hand and gaining reach in this way is extremely useful while drawing the sword, keeping it with only the uh, main hand and then letting the weapon slide with the same hand. Instead, we, in general speaking, European longsword, we don't have a lot of drawing techniques. Actually, there are few of them and they are not really specifically told as drawing techniques. For example, Fiore Delibery, the system, the master uh, uh, from which I inspire my fencing, from which I learn fencing, um, has some kind of somewhat drawing techniques and some of them are actually similar to actions which I've seen in the Sensei Seki video. Uh, I will show you one for example. So for example, when a cat is coming to our uh, head, we are basically drawing our sword, we beat aside the opponent's blade and we cut into it. So what I have seen uh, in uh, Sensei Seki video uh, is basically is pretty similar. Uh, it's this more or less uh, similar parry, uh, at least uh, at my eyesight, uh, to the one I train in Fiore. But the answer is a reverso, as we call it, a reverso fendente, so a, a cut which comes from above but an with an angle from left to right. Instead, we generally speaking answer back with a mandrito. So we parry the action and we cut into the, the opponent with a mandrito, so a cut which goes from right to left. But it's pretty similar and I was really surprised about it. So in our systems, we have these few drawing techniques, for example, which are not actually described as drawing techniques, but which actually seems to fit the case reasonably. At the same time, as I already mentioned, we don't have a lot of drawing techniques, which instead seems to be uh, actually prominent to an extent, far more uh, common in Japanese swordsmanship, uh, generally speaking. So another aspect which distinguish uh, the longsword, of course, is the presence of the second edge, which we call, depending from the tradition, either Italian or German, full edge or short edge. So this is useful to deliver other uh, actions with other mechanics. For example, if I, if I am crossed in this way, I can deliver this kind of two-edge attack, but I can also deliver this by keeping uh, the cross card more or less in connection with the opponent blade and land a full edge strike using another mechanics. So this, of course, changes the way in which the uh, arm interacts with the weapon itself. So, uh, with the two edge I have this angle, with the full edge I have this angle here, which helps me reaching the head even if the opponent tries to parry the action. Another action, for example, which I can try out, which is of course a little bit more risky, I, have, I am threatened by the, uh, the weapon of the opponent, but if I use my reach I can try to cut with the full edge 
the opponent's hands. Now, this is generally speaking not taught in many manuals, but we generally use it in sparring, for example, uh, because it is really useful. In uh, other, uh, as far as I've seen in other traditions, it is present the cut with the two edge under the arms uh, in more or less this kind of situation, so I think it fits the case. Now, another extremely interesting action which I've seen displayed by Sensei Seki is uh, similar to some actions that we have both in the Italian and the German tradition. In the Italian, for example, is the crossing at Mezza Spada in Fior de Liberi. In the German tradition, it is relatable to uh, the Zorno, for example, which is the idea of beating aside the opponent's blade and using this uh, beat to uh, hit the opponent with a thrust. Sensei Seki was doing it by moving backward, of course, because if the opponent is cutting at our head, uh, we take the reach to land our thrust. This is very similar to what we do. Uh, we actually do it in different ways. Also, it is presented in the manuals in slightly different ways, uh, moving sideways, moving backward or standing still. This can be done in two tempi. We generally cut over the opponent's blade and then we redirect the, uh, the thrust toward the opponent's neck. Uh, or again, we do it in a single tempo, so we cut into the opponent cut and we land the thrust in uh, one single motion. But it's pretty similar conceptually speaking. I have also seen another action uh, in uh, uh, the action presenting like Sensei Seki trying out the longsword and the katana versus each other, um, which was really similar to the exchange of thrust of your delivery. So again, a lot of things in common. Some differences, of course, related to the weapons, the styles, etc. But a lot of interesting common things. The last point I want to touch is in relation to the parry on the shinogi, so the angle uh, of the edge. Now, we don't have such kind of refined uh, techniques, uh, specific techniques. Uh, in fact, to me, it was really interesting to learn this kind of aspect. I was uh, really curious. I am actually really, really curious now about it. Uh, at the same time, I wanted to point out it in relation to it that uh, as far as this makes a lot of sense to me, the difference that there is between the, um, the boken in relation to the katana, to the nylon uh, sword in relation to the longsword uh, is different. So the boken is a slightly better representation of a katana in many different senses uh, compared to the nylon sword compared to the actual longsword. So it is slightly easier to interact with uh, um, a boken on the, on the longsword compared to a katana uh, against an actual longsword, a real one, of course, a steel one. But at the same time, I get the, the concept. The idea of this angle is really, really smart. And so I will experiment with it in the future. At the same time, I wanted to point out this little difference between the training uh, weapons. So, thank you very much to uh, Shogo and to Sensei Seki for making this video and actually giving to us of the human environment the chance to answer to it. Uh, at least personally speaking, I am extremely interested in uh, Japanese swordsmanship in general. I've read a lot of uh, uh, manuals and treaties, like the Gorino Sho, uh, the uh, Yagyu Munanori book, uh, the Hei Hoka Densho, if this <laughs> spell it correctly, so the sword that brings life, the Ito Itosai 12 rules of the swords, and uh, many others. So it is something really interesting to me. I am trying to learn from it also as far as I can from books and videos of Shogo and Sensei Seki and uh, many others. So it is really interesting to me to like compare, having the chance to compare uh, these two worlds and the answer to uh, the video. So, again, thanks to you all for watching. Thanks again to Sensei uh, Seki and uh, to Shogo. And of course, thank you to Lisa for helping me in this video. And as always, see you next time.